Octobus facility on Hudson moves this spot? The question was, would, would the current Octobus facility on Hudson move to the hub site right here? And We've had a lot of discussion about that. The primary function of that facility is bus-to-bus -bus transfer. So you're transferring between bus routes. So we, it could move here. We didn't feel like that it was based on the discussions we've had with, with uh, COPPA, ACOG, as well as the advisory committee, that it was a necessity. If we find a site that has enough space and we can bring it in, we can. But there is no real primary connection between the two, other than there needs to be some connectivity that if you are coming to the downtown area on a bus, you might be able to get off the transfer here and get a connection. You'd be a streetcar or another bus over to the facility, but we didn't feel like because of the function primarily being bus to bus transfers, there was a real need for it to be integral with this. In many cities they do that though. <coughs> I suggest that we meet up with like, rail to Norman to Edmond or wherever. I would presume those some of those people getting off the train will want to get on the bus to go to work. Yes. They have to now transfer twice. I, I think you're right, Steve. I, I think Alan, I, all of Alan, what he said is correct, but we're not ruling it out. At Tier 2, we're going to look at what we would have to do to those sites that make the cut to accommodate that bus transfer center. So we're going to look at it. Then we're going to decide, okay, is that something and how do, how do we deal with it if those sites can't accommodate? And part of the way we'll deal with that is part of our next step is to do a ridership analysis. There was a regional ridership model that's just been completed, and our ridership consultant is now taking that and fine-tuning it to really focus on the hub location itself, which will give us some projections in terms of how many people are coming in from each direction on commuter rail, where are they transferring to, where are they going. This is based on the demographics of that regional model. So that'll, it, that'll inform us to the level of detail of how many people really are going to come in on commuter rail and need to go to North Oklahoma City, and how do you provide that connectivity with the buses? So once we have that, we can put that level of detail in here and really look at that. But it's a very good point. Derek? Yeah, I wondered, uh, you know, this dialogue is really important and certainly uh, healthy. I, I wonder, uh, funding is such an essential component to this, and if funding get entered into your equation, because high-speed rail, as we know, uh, was $8 billion in their stimulus act for high-speed rail. And for example, the governor of Wisconsin has turned back about $850 million of that. Uh, there was opportunities there. I wondered if you guys had factored in or equated any of this to the availability of funding. You know, whether one thing would be more realistic than another. Because if every, every design has a high-speed rail component to it, and the money's finite, and the stimulus obviously was a limited short-term uh, program, I wondered if you guys were, were willing to adjust in the future. Like, say, for example, high-speed rail funding wasn't as in view, but modern streetcar would be, which we know we're, we're moving the ball on, or, Light, light rail, would you guys be willing to evolve in your ideas from that, that standpoint? Great question. The way we have dealt with that one of the projects is we have to think of this as a 30-year master plan and that funding is going to come over a period of years by mode. You know, ACOG or COPPA is not going to fund high-speed rail. Those funds are going to come from somewhere else. It may not happen for some indefinite period of time. We want to make sure that we don't preclude it happening here. So we'll actually come up with, this is kind of the end of the study, is a phasing plan. Maybe phase one is just the streetcar and some bus facilities and Amtrak. And then we have to be able to make sure that as, as commuter rail comes in, that fits and that we design the and size of facilities to accommodate those passengers. And when high-speed rail comes in, that fits and we know where it's going to go. So we want to inform, use this project to inform those other projects as to where the location is, how it fits in, and have a master plan that accommodates all of those. But yeah, the funding component is, I don't want to say it's outside of our scope, we're going to have, we're going to develop a cost estimate but that cost estimate will actually make some assumptions as to what that future funding might be and where it's going to come from. I, th I think the funding side of our equation, to add on to that, is more about thinking strategically about how to position ourselves to get that future funding that and be, contain that flexibility so that we can tap into those pots as they become available. And one of the reasons we go through this process, essentially an alternatives analysis, is so we don't jeopardize future federal funds in the process. We've got to be able to show later when someone goes to funding that we went through a process, the public was involved, and that we looked at alternatives and that this was the best alternative. Claire, and then we'll go back to this. Um, another consideration you might throw into this, um, one of the sites meeting all the criteria for transportation, which site might have the biggest uh, economic impact on Oklahoma City? And I think you might look at 
look more strongly at the Cox Convention Center site. Uh, that uh, particular building is not going to be our main convention center at some point. Right. It's always been a four block, square block division between the commercial part of downtown, Bricktown, and other elements. If uh, that building uh, were basically gutted inside, it's got huge clear spans so it could make a grand central station. Uh, you could put uh, commercial retail, which Oklahoma City does not have right now. We have entertainment retail, but we don't have stores, uh, department stores, all of those things. So you could create a more classic uh, train station uh, internationally because uh, all the great train stations in the world have huge commercial sectors in them and grand spaces. So everything aside, uh, I mean, as long as it meets the other criteria, I think that would be a very good place to look because you're taking care of a space that we don't really know how it's going to be taken care of. Also, uh, I would consider cutting axes north and south through there that are pedestrian axes that are actually open. You might have, you would have a weather control situation through there, but you're actually cutting through this so you have kind of an outdoor indoor space that opens up the north-south parts of downtown to the uh, Oklahoma City Sports Arena and the Myriad Gardens to Bricktown and use that to do that. Uh, and you can put the track over EK Gaylord, uh, the extra track, uh, and then underneath could be the buses and the taxis and all of those things that function off EK Gaylord. Or you could even use the other side of the track for the switching, but connect it because there are a lot of stations in the world that, you know, like one you showed, that sit there but are connected by uh, other means to the actual tracks, and that's not unusual at all. So I think a really strong look should be taken at that because that solves maybe several problems that the downtown's going to have. Did you get all that, Hans? Yeah. <laughs> Hans Boots with the University of Oklahoma is in the back. I also have that. We'll get that to Hans, too. So. I, I Hans is actually looking at exactly that concept. Not, not necessarily with the station, but he is looking at some form of adaptive reuse of, of that site. Uh, which could be integrated directly with the station if this should be the best location. So whether this station is part of it or maybe it's just connected to it and it becomes a retail and commercial center. Uh, great comment. Let's take one more.